We're learning Likutei Sichos for Parshas Rein, Volume 2. Page 81. Gimel, Section 3. Ma'utu amitit shel ha'adam yadam el elion. The true nature of man, the true essence, is to liken himself to that which is above. Kivyechol, as it were. La'adam elion shal kikseh shuhu ha'adam amitit. To do to the supernal man who is sitting upon the chariot, like the chariot that Ezekiel saw. And that is the true form of man. That's really who man is. That's where we strive to attain that level. What does it mean that we sit on the, on the, on the chair? The chair, we've talked about this, is Bina. Chair is, Olam HaKiseh is the world of Bina. And Bina, in the, world of, uh, in the world of the early philosophers, in the Greek world, that was called the Galgala Achi, the ninth sphere. And what this ninth sphere was, was the one who moved all the other spheres. So in essence, it was what decided, it was the origin of what runs the world physically spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, materially, in all respects, the ninth sphere is what runs everything. So that's called the Merkava, that world of the Kiseh, is what Ezekiel sees in his vision of the chariot. And on that he sees a, 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 the human form sitting, we say that it's usually Yaakov Avinu. And what does this mean? It means that we need to strive to be the ones who run the world and not have the world run us. In other words, we're supposed to impact the world and not have the world drag us along and force us to be less than we could. That's the true superiority of the speaker. It's very interesting. When you say that man is a speaker, I was talking about this on Shabbos, when you talk about vegetation, what is the purpose of vegetation? All the vegetation is meant to do one thing. We see it from the creation, from the moment of creation. That the vegetation should, the height of the vegetation, the highest level of vegetation is fruit trees. In general trees, but because it, the, the, the earth did not give forth the right thing that God said, part of the punishment was that not all the trees would have fruit, or at least wouldn't have fruit that was edible. But the point of all of the vegetation is the height of it, the, 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 the apex of veg vegetation is to make fruit. Which fruit is the sweetest? No. Uh, it's like a lemon. Is that? What? But we're talking about, I understand, but we're talking about the fruit. Which fruit is the sweetest fruit? Probably grapes. No. You're close. Quite close. But you're close, but you're not. The date. The date is the sweetest fruit. By far. Like, there's no comparison even. The amount of sugar in a date per, uh, per gram compared to, uh, to grapes is like I don't know, 100 times more. I don't know what it is. In any case, so what do you see there? That, that if, you're, if you have the best of that quality, you're the king. So we say that the date palm is the king of the trees. It's not just a bit, but you see, how, how does the date palm become the date palm? In Hebrew, it's a tamal. What tamal literally means the end of bitterness. Why? Because date palms have this ability more than any other tree to live off of bitter water. They can live off of ocean water. So that's why they grow very well in, by, by the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is not just bitter, it's, it's like, it's a hundred times bit more bitter, saltier than, than the ocean. But they grow great there. Not only do they grow well, but they actually produce the best dates, which are even sweeter. The more bitter the water, the more, the more sweet the, the fruit, actually. The same thing is by man. What is man? Man is the speaker. Who speaks the best? Who's the greatest speaker? The one who's had the most trouble in life. The, the more things you've had to get over, 
the more you become a great speaker. What do you mean you get a great speaker? You're not a great orator. It doesn't mean you know how to give a speech. But it means that you've had to find words to deal with all your difficulties. And so you have, a, you're, you're the king of, the, of, of men. That's why the king in Yiddishkeit is always a speaker. Amar melech akar tura. That the king spoke and the mountain was moved. He has such powerful speech. So who's the greatest king that ever, ever was? The two of them. David the Melech, King David, writes the Psalms, the greatest poetry that's ever been written. And his son, King Solomon, who writes the greatest wisdom literature that's ever been written. In any case, that's, that's what it means to be called a man. That you should be a speaker. What do we know about God? That He speaks. How did He create the world? By speaking. How did He give us the Torah? In words. These are all, these are all qualities of speaker in the end. So man becomes godly-like when he speaks like God. When all his words are words of Torah, when all his words are words of prayer, when all his words are dedicating, de- dedicated to mimicking God. How do you become one and the same? How do you adapt the speech of, of the Almighty? It's when you do is his mission. He's given you a mission in life. To perform that mission, that's how you become like, like God. How, okay, it's very interesting. What, what did Adam want? He wanted to be like God. And he said, if you be like God, means I should know. No, it's not about knowledge, it's about action. Do what he told you to do. It's, you'll also have wisdom. It, wisdom will come from that. But if you put the emphasis on the action, it's like, for instance, uh, learning. Okay? So learning is a tough, tough job. People who learn full-time, so they learn 12, 14, 15 hours a day. They're in front of books for that much, uh, that much time out of their day. That's really difficult. You don't become wise just because you, you know, it comes out of the thin air. People become really smart because they read a lot. They learn a lot. Uh, Rav Steinzels, for instance, he used to finish on his birthday every year Bavli and Yerushalmi. Actually, the same he would do on one or the other, but during the year he finished both of them. His, 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 his birthday was always on Gimel Av. Again, thankfully, it didn't change from year to year. So in Talmud, he was always agitated. He was anxious. And he'd come to his home and, it, and, and his wife would say, because he has to finish he has to finish the, the round of the whole Babli and the Rishalmi. And then suddenly, like a week before, he's like he suddenly this big calm would come upon him. Why? Because he was finished now. He knew he was, he was on the road to finishing. But you'd, sometimes you'd see him, like sitting with a Gemara, you know, a small Gemara, not a, not a, big, not a big volume. That, and, and reading, just reading. And he's reading and reading and reading. And he, he knew most of the daffs by heart. At least if he didn't know the wording, he knew, he knew the topic, he knew the shakla entire, he knew the, the discussion. He, so he would just read for hours. And every, t- every time he'd catch him that he wasn't you know, talking to someone or working, he'd always have a book in his hand and he'd be learning. Always, every, all the time. Even though he knew all of Shas, he knew it really well. He I remember when he, he had a, an accident, a car accident. He was at home for like three weeks. It was pretty bad. He like, came out with a, you know, eye in a, eye in a, how do you say, what's the expression? He came out with a, not by the skin of his teeth, but with an eye in a, whatever. Eye in a tooth. <coughs> so he came out of it, but he, he had to stay at home. He couldn't, he couldn't drive. He, he didn't drive for a year afterwards, but he couldn't go anywhere. So what did he do during those three weeks? He had, no, he had a library at home. So the library at home was stupendous. He, like, it was like an actual library. Like the, 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 the bookcases were not like people put it on the, on the uh, wall. He had a room that was just bookcases, like in a library. And in the library he had two bookcases that were just shooting, just responsa. So I saw him during that time. I came to visit him a few times because it was... And I 
saw the progression it was unbelievable. We had a stack on this side of the bed, and had a stack on this side of the bed. And from time to time that you came, like all the books would move. <laughs> and then he'd ask me to go get another stack. And within three weeks, he went over most of his shooting. It's like something like 80, 90 books of responsa. Just mind-boggling. But it was just, first of all, it was hard work. He just spent the time learning. That's what he did. Anyway, so that's how you become wise. So that's how you become like, like th- that's a shlichus. That's a mission. You don't sit there and, uh, okay, that's action. Oh, Learning yeah. is action. Yes, but the said of the So there is order and gradation in this. At first, it's at a lower level. And then at a higher level. Until a person can dedicate all of his time to performing his mission in life. It, it goes by stages. You can't do it right away. You do it slowly. As it was explained in the Mimer that he, that he talked about in this Sicha, that at first you come to the stage called you, you follow Hashem your God. You follow, you're behind. What does it mean? You don't see anything. You don't see the face. When you don't see the face, there's no inner meaning yet. It's just like following somebody. You, you, you don't even know what his intention is. You don't know where he's going. You just do it. Until slowly the person reaches the purpose, the ultimate end of this type of elevation. And then he clings to God himself. Now he's no longer following even. He's not even just following. He is. He, he becomes like Hashem. Until he becomes one thing with, with Hashem. That's the ultimate state of being and performing one's mission in life. And that's what it means to become Adam Elyon. I will be like God. People think I'm supposed to be a God. I'm not supposed to be God. I'm supposed to do my mission. When I do my mission, eventually, when I do my purpose, my, my, my calling in the world, because God commanded me to do it, then I eventually become like God. That's what it means to become like God. As opposed to Adam, who heard, all you need to do is eat a piece of fruit. You just take the sweetening in the beginning. There's no hard work. You just take, here's a pill, a special pill, and you'll take it, and now you'll be like God. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It's not to be confused with the fact that you can skip levels in the work. Let's say somebody gives you a pill and says, Ah, look, if you take this pill, you won't have to do uh, the first uh, year of work. That's fine, because I still have 120 others. I can skip years in the work. That's th- if somebody gives me a pill, they can do it. Like in the famous story that we always talk about with the Alter Rebbe who offered the Tzemach Tzedek. He told him, here, let me, let me elevate you to a new level. So, so, so he, the Tzemach Tzedek said, I don't want it. Why? Because uh, I need to work by myself. <laughs> Later he, 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 he regretted it. Because he said, I would have worked by myself anyway, just from a higher level. And somebody dropping you off on the mountain. And unfortunately, this mountain doesn't have an end. Well, fortunately, not fortunately. You can always go higher. Okay, in any case. How high can you come in this state of being one with God? To the point like, like Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu in, in Parshas uh, Ekev, last week's Parsha, we just read two, two days ago, what did he say? Venatati I will give grass for your animals, for your livestock. What do you mean, Moshe will give the grass? God gives the grass. He says, no, 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 no. The moment that you and God are one thing, you talk like that. I am, I am doing this. That's how high it can go. All this because he was so nullified that the only thing he ever did was God was what God had, had called upon him to do. Th- those were the only things that he did. He was no being to himself. He had no sense of self, of self that is separate from God. Yeah. That's what he says, and we are but not, we're nothing, he and our own. That the, the, the divine presence itself is speaking from his, from his throat. We talked about this yesterday. The, 
the goal of all speech is to come to the place where I'm speaking the divine presence. That's certainly how a person should be with his wife. That's what we talked about yesterday. That if I'm arguing with my wife, so that's not the divine presence. The divine presence is always, is always elevating the other person. It's always bring, taking them higher. It's always empowering them. It's always, always giving them more strength. And it's always forever it's always forever what we, how would you say no it, not just nullify I, if there's an argument I'm always the one to no no given sounds like a, the vater is, is a lot is, is a lot more rectified no the I'm the one who compromises all the time. That's as good as I can come. Yeah. Always. I, I, I will always compromise. Why? Because I want to empower the other side. Because I want to, to strengthen them. And if not, if I can't compromise, so I don't get into an argument at all. That's just not, not something I'm going to argue about. And so when Moshe spoke and the Shechina, the Divine Presence was coming out of the five origins of speech in his mouth, and that's what it meant that he and God were clinging to one another. He was clinging to God. So the same thing is true about each one of these levels, the inanimate and the vegetable and the animal, they all need to cling to man. What does it mean that they need to cling to man? That they need to attain the level of speech. They have to become part of man's speech. That's why we say that you will eat and you will eat them. We don't eat them because um, we're not we're, we're looking for the energy. Because it says, Man cannot survive on bread alone. Man survives on the word of God that's inside these, these uh, uh, plants or, or animals that we eat. What's the word of God there? That God himself, when he created the world, he, he put these words in them. And that's, what, that's the elevation of the sparks. Uh, section 4. So it says, it's not so simple to take an animal and to elevate it. Because the nature of the animal is to descend. It's not naturally ascending. So to do that, something that's against its nature, and to include it within the supernal man, first of all, in the lower man, and then in the supernal man, that is a long and difficult path. It's a long and difficult path going from following God to clinging to God with this animal. And all the, all the paths, all the journeys in life are treacherous. There's, it's a treacherous path that you have to follow to take an animal and to elevate it to that level. And it's to this end to get over this treacherousness of the path that the Torah revealed these two signs in the animals to tell us is this the right thing to eat in order to elevate it to Hashem. But this also is a sign about how we in general are working. So it's a sign about which animals can be elevated easily. But it's also, we said, it's a sign for something higher. What's the something higher? The nimshal. The nimshal that is now inside the mushal, the signified, which is inside the signifier. So what, what does that mean in our daily service of God?
So how do we understand these? How do we understand these two signs in this sense? So to understand this, we have to first introduce another concept. And we don't have time for it. So tomorrow, God willing, we'll introduce the concept. And then we begin to see how these two signs guide us in navigating this treacherous path of moving from following God to becoming one with God. And there's all we, lear- we learn this from these two signs that are signs of kashrus in animals. Tomorrow at 7.30. Tomorrow at 8.00. God willing.